with Todoroki Shoto's secretary and I had been for a few years now. He was the CEO of Todoroki Enterprise, so working for him was not a small feat. It was an important job. The longer you two had worked together, the easier your job was. You understood Todoroki and he understood you. Many times throughout the day, he would ask you for something, and before he could finish his sentence, you'd be handling him a file. You were perfectly in sync. It wasn't just professionally that you got along, but you really liked Todoroki as a person. Working so closely with him for all this time, you got to see more of him than most. Sure, he was handsome and rich, that's what the word saw. But knowing him firsthand, you knew he wasn't a playboy like most assumed, and he wasn't exactly the most charming person. You didn't mean that in a bad way, but he just wasn't a flirtation person like most thought. He was very blunt and accidentally hilarious. It could be incredibly obvious, despite his intelligence. You couldn't count how many times you had seen woman flirts with him and it went right over his head. He was kind and caring, even if he didn't show it off. What most people knew nothing of was what he and his family endured in their youth. Shoda's childhood was very troubling and had a lot of up and a lot of what happened in it stuck with him whether he realized it. Shoto was an amazing person, and it was hard for you to not fall in love with him. Even harder was keeping your feeling hidden. There was no way he could ever feel the same about you, so you decided for your own sake you needed to move on. Normally, you worked a lot of overtime, you didn't mind it. If Shoto had to stay late, you had no problem staying with him and helping him so he could try and get home at a decent hour. It wasn't like you had much to do anyway and you loved being around him. In a way, the late night were a good thing. Ordering takeout and sitting in his office with him, helping him with whatever task he was doing. But tonight, you had a date. It took you a lot of courage to finally try and set one up. Todoroki, you said, entering into his office. I'll be heading home early at 5 today. I can't work every time. Oh, okay. He said looking about you. Is everything okay? Y yeah, I just have a date. You told him. You didn't like saying it out loud. Oh, he said. His tone was odd. Actually, I need you to stay and help me with a project. Wait, what? You said, you literally just say okay, but now you're telling me I can't? Well, no, I'm saying no. And if you want to leave early, this will be your last day working here. He said, what? Your voice almost broke. Shoto Todoroki was your boss, yes. But you consider him your closest friend. And he always treated you as such. He had never talked about firing you, not even as a joke. Your heart dropped. And you felt sick. You had no idea where this was coming from. You can work late. Or not work here at all. He repeated. What gives you the right? You said, tears welling up in your eyes. You hated how unprofessional you felt right now. But it was being unfair out of nowhere. I have come to work early every day. Stay late whenever you ask. And even when you didn't, I have worked holidays and weekends at the top of a hat. And the one time I asked to leave, and the one time I asked to leave one time, you tell me no? Are you going to fire me? It seemed sure to realize the damage the word had done. His expression softening as her tears slide down your cheek. Before you could speak up, you were out the door. If Todoroki decided that your years of lawyer work meant nothing, then maybe it was time to find a new job. You left, going home, tears running down your face as you did. It was bad enough how in love you were with Choto, but when you tried to move on, you tried to stop you? How cruel was it? You did everything you could to cheer yourself up as you got ready for your date, listening to your favorite upbeat songs as you put on your makeup and picked out your favorite dress.
He was supposed to meet your date at a restaurant, so you found yourself at a table awaiting him. You were early. It was a habit of yours to always be early to things. As the time went on, it was now 7 o'clock, as there was no sign of your date. Being late wasn't an attractive trait, but it was fine. It wasn't like you had to marry this guy. You were, you were just trying to branch out to get your mind off one person in particular. Then, you found yourself waiting for 5 minutes, then 10, then 20, with no text from said date. If that wasn't bad enough, the looks that the waiters and other customers were giving you was the sherry on top. Your day had already been terrible, and it seemed it was only getting worse. Taking a deep breath, trying to hold in the tears you stood up, and left. Thankfully, you hadn't ordered in. Thankfully, you hadn't ordered anything. The walk home was perhaps the most pathetic moment of your life. Tears streaming down your face, you wonder if your day could get any worse. Then, it started pouring. By the time you reached your apartment building, you were freezing, cursing the fact that you didn't bring a sweater to cover your dress that didn't give you any warmth. It's something could get any worse, you thought, as you saw Shadow standing in front of your apartment door. You considered turning around and leaving, but he spots you before he could. There you are, he said. You're soaked. What happened? His eyebrow pulled together in concern. What does it look like? You didn't mean to yell. What does it look like? You didn't mean to yell, but your day had been awful and you couldn't hold it together anymore. I got stood up in a restaurant full of people, then it started raining while I was walking home after I got fired by my best friend. Shadow looked at you with a sad expression. I don't want you to go home. You said, pushing past him before putting your king in the door. Wait, please, don't go. He said as you attempt to shut the door on him after you entered. Please, let me try to explain. You stared at him. You were so upset, it sounded like a great idea to slam the door in his face. But the way he looked at you with those poopy dog eyes, you couldn't manage it. <sighs> You get a minute, you said, opening the door for him to enter. Okay, he said, following you in. You stood there, staring at him. Hurry up, you said as he stared at you, taking in your appearance. I act unprofessionally today, but not only that I was a bad friend to you. You're not just an employee to me, you're my best friend. And it was wrong of me to many levels to act the way I did. I didn't mean what I say. It was wrong of me to say, you're not fired. I could never fire you. I don't understand all the work that you... I don't deserve all the work that you put in, not only for me, but for the company. And you're an irreplaceable employee and friend, and I'd do anything to keep you at my company. His word came out steady, but in a sincere tone. You wonder how many times he reused his word before you got home. <sighs> I'll come back, but only if you answer one question. You said anything. He said. Why did you refuse to let me leave for my date? You asked. Shadow's face went through a few expressions before settling on a fearful one. You wonder why that seemed to be the one question he didn't want to hear. I, he started, but stopped. You had never seen him so speechless. I didn't like the idea of you going on a date with someone. Why? Why? You questioned. You questioned. Shadow took a deep breath before speaking. Because I'm in love with you, and I have been for years. I know you don't feel the same way. It was wrong of me to let my feeling get control of me and to intervene. He said, so how did your dates go? You stood there speechless. Shoto loved you. He loved you and thought you didn't feel the same way. 
didn't know where to start. He stood me up, Shoto. He replied. His expression instantly turned to one of anger. It seemed to click for Shadow. You were armed hurly with red eyes, all of the clue at all. What the hell is wrong with him? He said. Shadow looked more angry than you had never seen him in a long time. It's okay, you said. How is it okay? How could anyone be stupid enough to miss, to miss out on spending even a moment with you? You're absolutely the most perfect woman I've ever met. It's okay, because, because you're here, you said, taking a step closer. It was hard to even remember the embarrassment you felt not long ago with him standing here in front of you. Chota looked confused, which wasn't surprising. It seemed you had to be straightforward as possible. I love you too, Shoto, you said. Now, there were barely any space between you. I've loved you for years. I didn't want to go on a date, but I thought I had to move on because you didn't feel the same. Can I kiss you? He says. He's already leaning down to you, but you know if you said no, it'd stop. I yes, you said, leaning to meet him. This kiss was passionate. The kiss is passionate. He's holding you like if he lets go, he never see you again. Your hand grips the back of his blazer. I love you so much. He said between kisses, you're too perfect. I'd be lost without you. His word met your heart, and you wonder how one of the worst days of your life has turned into the best one. I'm hungry. Let me cook you dinner, you said as you pulled back. Let me hold their takeout. And you can warm up in the shower while it gets here, he said. Mm, okay, that's a pretty good idea, you say. Thanks. I've picked up money from all of your good ideas, he says. It's kind of cheesy, but you still like it. You shower and you thank Choto for his ID as the chills start to leave your body. By the time you're out clean and in your favorite pair of sweat, He's sitting on the couch with the food. You cozy up to his side and he wraps an arm around you. It's entertaining trying to cuddle and eat at the same time. At one point, you get sauce on his shirt and you both love. I'm sorry I didn't say it sooner. He says, You're now cuddled up properly now that you're done eating. Oh, me too. You reply, <laughs> For two smart people, we can both be pretty dense, it seems. But we're together now. That's what matters. We have all the time in the world now, he said.